I, I, it needs two minutes, then you would have got those pangs of chocolate. You've cheated yourself and others. Hi, I'm Lawrence. And I'm Tara. And we're on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond. And one of those memos pertains to, well, drinking chocolate. Yes, hot chocolate as we Americans call it. Well, we call it that too. Oh yeah, that's true. In fact, I didn't even know drinking chocolate was a term until I saw the label of the Cadbury's box that was sent to us. Oh, do you know how I learned about drinking chocolate? You read. No, because Starbucks had like a drinking chocolate drink a long, long time ago that was super, super thick and chocolatey and really heavy. Kind of like drinking chocolate, I guess. It always comes back to Starbucks with you. This is not an ad for Starbucks. It never is. I like Starbucks. I, they're fine, so long as you have a laptop. That's not what this video is about, though. This video is about hot chocolate, specifically about me drinking British hot chocolate here today for your viewing pleasure. That's that's all I'm going to do. No, no, no. Not just British. What? Did, what? We have three different types of hot chocolate for you. Three? Like, yes. From all over the British Isles? No. What are we doing? So you're going to try the difference between hot chocolate from the Americas and hot chocolate in the UK. The Americas, brilliant. So like Hershey's hot chocolate. I love Hershey's. I've pointed this out before on my channel, so that's good. No, no, not Hershey's. What? We're going to do American hot chocolate. Well, yeah, I mean, that's what that is, isn't it? Surely. Is there any other brand of chocolate in America? <laughs> hot chocolate, yes. And chocolate, actually. Ghirardelli, all the others... Is it Ghirardelli? No. We'll find out, I suppose. As yes, we get you going. will. It's a surprise. Brilliant. All right, well, let's, let's get underway. And, and anybody that's been watching these taste testing videos will know that I've been giving Lorenzo's, that's my rating system, uh, to the item in question. So I'll be handing out some Lorenzo's today. One is poor. Five is super. So it's like a Hollywood handshake. Essentially, it is a Hollywood handshake, yes. All right. Well, I didn't really make all of these. I just did what the boxes said to do. Cheated, in a way. I mean, it's hot chocolate mix. That's all you have to do. The first one, which is a bit of a surprise, and it's not from the United States in the traditional sense. What, what do you mean? You said it's from America. You said the Americas. I did say the Americas. Wasn't listening. This one is from Central America, and it's actually, it was a request. So that's what we're going to start with today. All right. Um, it is a very special hot chocolate that one of our viewers grew up with uh, called Abuelita. And it's like Nestle, but apparently it is a staple of Mexican and Mexican-American households. Look at that. Is that Angela Lansbury? No. Well, it's it's an, a Mexican abuelita, like a grandmother. So it wouldn't make sense. Anyway, this is what we're going to try right now. And believe it or not, I haven't ever tried it either because what I grew up with is what he's going to have from the you know United States. So we'll talk about that in a moment. But here it is. That's it, is it? Okay. Oh, good. Look at that. It's hot. It is pretty hot. Yeah, it is. Because it is hot chocolate. But it's actually hot, which we'll get to that in a minute as well. Should I let go before it burns my hand? Or well, yes. Just let go of that handle. That's how it works. So you want to show them what it kind of looks like? I do. Like? Well, first I'm going to show you the mug because I recognize this mug. It's from Chris Kindle Market here in Chicago. So that's good. And the actual uh, contents of the mug, it's, it's hard. I can't really tip it. The contents isn't hard. The, the process of doing it is, is hard, as in difficult. It's just basic hot chocolate, as you can see. It's brown, got a bit of a film. Brown colour. It, it doesn't really translate on, on the camera, but it's actually got a sort of a yellowy film to it as well. Yeah, it, it's a warm tint, do, like in terms of warm colour tones. Should I trust that? I hope so. Like I said, I haven't had it before either. Well, when you see yellow film out in the snow, that's, I mean, don't eat that. That's different. I mean, but it is... I didn't make this with snow. Well, good. I mean, because that's the opposite of hot chocolate. But actually, do you know what I'm going to do? For each one, I'm going to sniff them first. Give them the uh, the old nose. Because it was Gandalf that said, if in doubt, follow your nose, wasn't it? Well, I guess probably other people before Gandalf did because he was made up. Well, he's a thousand years old. Made that up too. And, uh, you know, the, the other thing about uh, the nose thing is that wine connoisseurs will tell you that that's very important. This isn't wine. In fact, there's no alcoholic content, although you'd be forgiven for thinking that I'd consumed a lot of that prior to doing this. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and give it some nose. Oh, that's weird. Why? What's weird about it? It doesn't smell like chocolate. Really? It sm Hang on. It smells sort of like biscuits. Biscuits? Not the kind of biscuits you'd get at Red Lobster, but it's British biscuits. Yeah, kind of like an oatmeal-based biscuit. That's what I'm smelling in this. That's hmm. weird. Let me smell it. Well, go ahead, but I'm doing the taste testing first. She does it second. 
Don't steal my thunder. I mean, I smell chocolate. Yes. But you're right, there is some kind of deeper smell to that. That's not chocolate. I mean, I'm not getting chocolate, but we'll see how it, how it goes. It's a nice t it's a nice smell, but it's, it's a very unexpected one. So here we go. It is still a bit hot. Sorry, that wasn't surprise at the taste. That was genuine pain. So it tastes good. It tastes. It just. It just for me doesn't taste like what I think of as hot chocolate. But I could happily call this a biscuit flavored drink and be done with that. Um, it's very nice. I won't give it a Lorenzo yet. I'm going to wait till I've done all three of these, and that way I have perspective on each of them. Uh, so I have another one because it, it it is rather nice. Hmm. I want to try it too. Yeah. All right. Just let me have a bit more. You're so greedy. <clears throat> That's good. All right. It is really hot. I'm I'm actually really surprised at that because these, of course, have been sitting waiting for us to start the video, and this has actually retained a lot of heat. Whereas if you touch the other two mugs, you don't really feel that heat as as heavily. That's probably good. Mm, the smell. It is. It's such a rich taste. Do you taste any chocolate in it? That's my question. Well, yeah. I really, I didn't honestly. Of course I do. I like. It tastes like chocolate, but it tastes like chocolate that's been enhanced in some way. Let's see what's actually in it because I feel like it has to have something in addition to chocolate, right? I'm sure it does. Yes. Um. So obviously the first ingredient is sugar, which surprise, surprise, it is hot chocolate after all. It has a lot of sugar in it. Chocolate is the second one. Soy is the third, and then vegetable oil. What does the powder look like inside? it it's actually not powder what that's the biggest surprise of all is that this specific type of hot chocolate is really interesting because it's like a t it, they call it a tablet um, and what it is is it's literally like a block of chocolate that you put in a pan over high heat well not high heat I think it's supposed to go up to a boil right but either yeah. way that's quite versatile isn't it because you could just eat it is that I mean, you probably don't want to do that would you do that I mean it is I guess it is kind of a chocolate bar. Is it? it it's sugar and chocolate should we, and soy. Sh should we do that live on air? I, we can try it. Why not? There's always the outtakes. So yeah, see, oh, it just wow. looks like yeah. it's like chocolate. That it is literally a chocolate bar. So w presumably, you just sort of melt this down then is in the right? milk. Yeah, over over the stove. While you, you so you cook it on the stove, that goes into hot boiling water, and you've made hot chocolate. Look at that. Okay, and th and this looks like chocolate, not a biscuit. But it still smells like a biscuit. I mean, it smells like the chocolate that we just drank. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, yeah, it's, uh, it, it is weird. It's really crumbly. It is actually kind of biscuit textury. It is. It's weird. Mmm. Yeah, it's, it's odd. I mean, I like it. Again, I really like that. I think I'd rather have it in hot chocolate. I would too. <laughs> we did it merely for the outtakes. <laughs> that was it. Okay, uh, put that back down there. Okay, so uh, what's the next sample that you have for me? So the next one is the obvious choice. It's the one that you were, I think, most excited about when I told you about the idea for this video. And it is, of course, Cadbury's drinking chocolate. <sighs> The one, the only, and I did not grow up with this. Even though I love Cadbury's, I've never tried this either. Really? Because I grew up with American hot chocolates. So. You're in for a treat. It's going to change your life tonight, here on air. Well, we're about to find out, right? So should I take this one first? Well, no. So I'll do the same thing as you did, and I'll smell it. I mean, it mostly just smells like milk. What is that? It does. It smells like milk, heavily. I mean, like, there's some chocolate in there, but it's like essence of chocolate with a lot of milk. It's a bit more than that. I mean, it's Cadbury. You should be getting the chocolate really coming through strong. So it it's, you know, it just looks like hot chocolate. <laughs> there isn't really much to say. There is a little bit of like a milky film on top, which makes sense since this was made with milk. Yeah, let's give it a go. Give it a taste because you'll really get pangs of chocolate. It's lovely. Mm. I mean, it is really lovely. It would be nicer if it was warmer. It didn't retain the heat the same way as the Abuelita does. To be fair though, we drank it, or you drank it, five minutes after we, we drank the other one. Yeah, but at the same time, I mean, this one is still like, touch the mug, it's still really hot, right? right? Whereas this one is just kind of lukewarm and it makes sense because in this case, this one was actually put in the microwave um, as per the instructions. You're supposed to put three tablespoons of cocoa powder and then mix it with the milk and put it in the microwave only just for like a minute and a half, which isn't hot enough to actually make it okay. hot. I, I, it needs two minutes. Then you would have got those pangs of chocolate. You've cheated yourself and others. It is such a nice flavor, though. I mean, like it is so the Cadbury's that you think of. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it is. Disappointingly lukewarm, but it is nonetheless still what I remember from my childhood. So I don't know that anything can beat this. It's probably already going to win. I think it's time to move on. I haven't done with this one yet. 
you can come back to it, but you have to try the American one. Can I have now. it after the video then? Sure. Don't take it all away from me. We have plenty of hot chocolate here, friends. This is one of my favorites growing up, and it also is one of the truly still United States based companies out there. Uh, it's called Swiss Miss. Yeah, it is. That's American. It's American, my friends. This was actually invented for United States flights as an alternative to coffee. What? And people loved it so much that they put it on grocery shelves in the 50s. That's amazing. Yeah. So specifically on flights to Switzerland or just anywhere? I don't know. I mean, like, I think it was just an alternative to coffee on domestic flights. I don't think people were going to Switzerland drinking Swiss Miss hot chocolate, as That's far a... as I know. Tell me in the comments below if I'm wrong about that. Amazing. Does it have a neutral taste? Swiss. Neutrality. <laughs> She got it. But it is so good. I think you're really going to struggle to find the Cadbury's as good as this. Oh, come after on. After that. I do appreciate the, the red and white stripes to denote United States. So that's Absolutely. Good. All right, let's go ahead. Oh, no, 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 no. What do you mean? What? Don't take the spoon out. Why? Because what I also have here are some marshmallows. I didn't nah. have the little ones, so I had to cut them down. But you can't have American hot chocolate without marshmallows. You don't need marshmallows. You it's do. It's only hot chocolate it's, on its own. No, no, no. It's, what are you doing? You... You have to put marshmallows in the hot chocolate. Next, you'll be putting a graham cracker in it and calling it one of those, what's the, what are they called? A s'more? A s'more, but liquid form. Well, yeah, sort of. I mean, that's what this is, isn't it, in a way? It's chocolate and marshmallow. It's a bit unusual. It's, it's like you only have too many ice cubes in a, in a beer glass, and you, you, you go to drink it, and the ice cube gets in the way of the beer, and it sort of goes down your chin. Yes, but if it sits long enough, what it does is it creates this nice milky film on top. That just adds to the whole experience. But do you concede that it might go down my chin? All right, I'll give it a go. Mm, mm. It tastes not dissimilar to the Cadbury one. It's slightly inferior, but it isn't far away. Unbelievable. I'll tell you what, though. I think that the marshmallows um, sort of... They ruin my capacity to take on board the actual taste of the hot chocolate. I'm only thinking about the marshmallows. Did so, you eat a marshmallow I didn't, with it? No, I didn't. No. Why would you do that? Yeah, you're not supposed to, I don't think. No, Although but, I bet little kids do. And I'm not a little kid, <laughs> as we've established. I'm not. I am not. I've got the maturity of a very wise, sage old man. Like Gandalf. Four-year-old. So let me try it now. All right. Again, not as hot as the Abuelitas, but certainly warmer due to its, uh, you know, use of hot water than the Cadbury's was. Yeah, but it is lukewarm again. It is just a cup of my childhood. That is what it is. Is it? I thought we got that from Target four weeks ago. Uh, every time that I drink this hot chocolate, I feel transported back to you know being five years old and i don't know going to the park with my mom and then coming home and having hot chocolate afterwards it's amazing because the cadbury one did the exact same thing for me i mean not your mom that'd be weird i didn't <laughs> know her at that point just someone's mom mine this marshmallow thing isn't such a bad idea I, i'm not certain either way whether this is an american tradition or if we do it back in britain i haven't really researched it because i didn't know you were going to drop this on me it used to be that the packets actually had like freeze-dried marshmallows inside. And then they, of course, would puff up a little bit when you added the hot water to it. Yeah. And then would make the film afterward. But the marshmallows were actually inside the package with the rest of the hot chocolate. Rationing really was a dark time, wasn't it? Um, so I think it's uh, time to go through each of these then and hand out some Lorenzo's and rate which one I think was the best. So why don't we start with the worst? The, the worst? What's in third place and what rating do you give it? Joint third and therefore joint second, would be the America's hot chocolate. Don't come at me. I mean, we've all got our biases, you know, and in my opinion, the, the Mexican one and the American one were still really nice, mm. but they, they can't hold a candle to the other hot chocolate. See how I got the word candle in there? That's also something that's hot. It's tenuous, but it worked. And I think that the, the Mexican one and the American one, I'd give four and a half Lorenzo's. Which can mean only one thing, that the winner today is, and there's, there's no bias here at all, is the Cadbury hot chocolate with, and this is a first on this very channel, five whole Lorenzos. You gave the lukewarm hot chocolate that doesn't have marshmallows in it a higher rating than the one with the marshmallows and the one that's hotter? Yeah, I would actually say that the, the, the absence of marshmallows is what, what swung it in the end. The larger lesson that we've learned today is that 
you can't rate something like this if you've actually grown up with a specific type of food item for your entire life because you're not unbiased. None of us are, right? It's fine. I mean, that's that's okay. I mean, you, you, you are right. Some people are, you know, dragged along by their uh, their own preconceived notions about things, biases about things, and, um, and that's what we've had today. Uh, marshmallow's a bit weird. It's good. I'll eat them all. Don't worry about that. What about you? I actually think, believe it or not, that my opinion is less biased than yours because I think the first one is the winner. And the reason why I think that this is the winner is because it has a depth of flavor that's very different to the other two. And it's, it. I don't know, just the aroma of it, the fact that it maintained its warmth longer, all these things just make for a better cup of hot chocolate. I could agree. I mean, I, again, I think it's in a class of its own. I think that's the, mm. the best thing I could say about it, honestly, is it is in a class of its own. And I'd almost, I'd call it hot biscuit. And that's, that's what I would say about it. I think I'm going to go now. <laughs> no, I really am. I'm going to go and I'm going to take this with me and I'll see you. Well, we've got to finish the video. I mean, I suppose I do get to have these to myself. That's it for this episode of Lost in the Pond. Thank you for joining us today. And by us, I mean me, because she's she's gone. Uh, if you like what you saw here, don't forget to subscribe by hitting the subscribe button and also by clicking my bell. And a big shout out to all of my patrons, without whom none of this would be possible, from the uh, technical equipment to the research to the, you know, hot chocolate. If you would like to become a patron of Lost in the Pond, you can do so at patreon.com slash lost in the pond. Anybody that becomes a patron will get access to to my secret live stream and anybody pledging five dollars or more a month will get access to my secret podcast and more thank you for tuning in today i'll see you for more vlogmas tomorrow thank you for watching this episode of lost in the pond don't forget to hit my stupid little face to subscribe and please share this video with the world hit me up on twitter instagram and facebook and if you would like to support this channel please do so at patreon.com lost in the pond